Hi there, welcome back to the New York Woodwork Shop. Let's get this out of the way. And the second video in our series of, actually there's no series, we're just making videos. This is the second one. So what are we gonna make today? We're gonna make a new table saw sled. This is my old table saw sled. Um, I used, uh, well, let me back up first of all, there's 5,284, I don't know if that's the official number, but there's a lot of how to build a table saw sled. So I'm going to just touch on, this is my sled, this is what I like and don't like, what we're gonna build, we're gonna use the CNC to build it. Um, so if you don't like CNC build videos, this probably isn't a video to watch. Um, I do own a Laguna CNC and I am wearing a Laguna t-shirt. This is not a Laguna sponsored video. I just happened to grab this this morning. Um, so, like I said, not a sponsored video. This is Al Does the Classics and his fledgling YouTube channel. So we did a tour. Uh, you can go check that video out. And now we're gonna do a table saw sled. We'll probably do some chop furniture and then maybe graduate to a cutting board. You know, because those are the, you have to do those videos. So, let's get started. The runners on this particular sled are the uh, micro jig adjustable runners. They're actually, I've taken them off of this sled already. Uh, I like them, they're a little short, but I think I'm going to use them again on the new sled. Uh, this is a real heavy sled, it's three quarter inch plywood with oak uh, front and rear, uh, whatever these bridge things are called, handles keep your fingers, uh, the fence, yada yada yada, those things. And uh, it's a heavy sled. It's a heavy sled and even though these are very very good and I'm going to reuse them, they're short and I was I was cross cutting slabs, which I shouldn't do on a, on a table saw sled, and it got, you know, it got a little wonky. Um, no fault of these. Like I said, I'm going to reuse them. Um, and changing saw blade sizes. I didn't really think about this, but over a couple of years, you get different size saw blades. All of a sudden, the kerf on your uh, table saw sled is not zero clearance anymore, and things start dropping in there. And I was actually making a cut yesterday or day, day before yesterday, and the sled twisted on me. And now I've disassembled this, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's that, that cr the the kerf is touching here, and it's almost a quarter inch at the back. So the whole sled was binding and I almost had a kickback and I literally had to muscle, like muscle it back, shut the saw off. And that's when we decided, we decided, we decided that uh, it's time to do is we're going to build a sled that has a little cutout here. Um, we're going to use half inch material. Um, we're going to cut some holes in it with the CNC to keep it light put the holes around the, the exterior edges and it'll be a little swoop. So the full sled is going to be three feet, but I'm only going to have 12 inches on this side because we can use the fence for uh, measuring on that side of the fence for cutoffs. And I can, so this has been all knocked apart. We're not going to reuse any of these pieces except for the, uh, micro jig sliders. So let's go look at the uh, CNC machine and uh, we'll give you a quick tour of that and then we'll talk about uh, the actual design of this thing. Okay now we're back all the way on the other side of the shop. The table saw is over there. That's where you were. You can see that from the uh, the uh, shop tour if you followed along there. And this is my Laguna 4x8 Swift CNC table. Um, it does have a vacuum table, as you can see by these valves down here. There are six valves and there are six zones. Each zone is approximately, uh, let's say, two, four, they're a little over two and a half feet, and they're split in two, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And each valve can be uh, controlled independently. 
Uh, right now, what I have is I have one gasket going all the way around the outside, so I leave all the valves open. And this is literally a sheet of MDF from Big Box Store. Um, and what you do is you take a little tiny, tiny, tiny cut and you take the shiny off of both sides and that vacuum will pull right through the uh, MDF. It's amazing. It's like, I don't it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Apparently MDF is porous enough. If you look right there, you can see the vacuums hoses are run outside because they're two, two and a half horsepower vacuums and they are pretty loud. You don't want them in your shop if you can, if you can help it. So I'll, uh, I don't know how much this camera's going to pick up, but that's the vacuum running. This is just a piece of two inch foam. It, like I said, it's pretty crazy. One finger. So, that's the vacuum table and it's amazing. I love it. The only thing I don't like about it is it doesn't work with small pieces. Small pieces, there's so much area here that it really doesn't hold down small, small pieces. So I end up screwing into the table a lot. Um, I've cut some squares uh, that I can actually mount down on the table, double check and make sure they're square with the gantry, and then I can just repeatedly slide things in. And I've got small ones. And then everybody makes fun of me, but my clamping system is hockey pucks, and I just reverse quick clamps. So you screw these down, and you throw your clamp in there, and, and you can put pressure against something. So you, slam, you, you put a piece in the right angle, which squares it to the table, screw down a hockey puck, and you hold it with a clamp. I'll put some pictures in. So, down here is a three and a half, I'm sorry, three horsepower liquid-cooled spindle, which is, if you're not familiar with CNC, a spindle is just a fancy name for your router. It's literally a three horsepower router. Mine happens to be liquid-cooled. Uh, there's, a, there's a bucket literally a bucket underneath the CNC table. We run RV antifreeze in ours. This is a heated climate controlled shop, but God forbid the power goes out. I don't want to be blowing my router up because it froze. So that's what we use there. And like I said, the two, two and a half horse vacuums are mounted on the outside hanging on the wall. That's why you can still hear them. And they're under an enclosure and vented so they're protected and all that good stuff. This is the controller for the router, uh, for the CNC, and this is literally a thumb drive, USB thumb drive. So you put your files from your computer that you design in VCard Pro, in my case, you plug them in here, and then you tell the CNC what you want it to do, what files you want it to cut, how fast you want it to cut, you have your speed control, um, your vacuum control, and there's a little zone here, and uh, a zone map to tell you, um, to tell you what what area of vacuum you're turning on and off with these valves. So that's a quick overflow. And I've got light that keeps things well lit, and I have a light over here. So that's a quick CNC tour. Uh, I'll put a couple of still shots of the tooling. Uh, I use. Well, the machine came with a mana tooling, uh, just as a, like a starter kit. And I've purchased some things from uh, Tools Today is a good source. And I buy the majority of my tooling now from a company called Vortex Tools. 
very, very, very good tooling and very, very good customer support. I literally call them up and say, hey, I want to cut this at this fast and this deep. What do you want me to use? And they'll say, use this bit, this bit, or this bit. And then I make a decision. So you send me them. And they've got good breaks, you know, price breaks and things like that. They don't have a social media presence. So Vortex Tools. V-O-R-T-E-X. You can. All right, so this is kind of the design that I'm kicking around here. It's, uh, you're looking down from the top of it, and this is Table Saw Slid 3.0, obviously. <laughs> but as you can see, there's a little swoop here. Uh, these are some holes that I've put in, drawn in. This will be the back bridge or fence that will keep it together as the kerf is cut right here. These are the little runners, and the front fence will be right here. So this is three feet by two feet, and this is going to be about, uh, this will also be two feet. So it's two foot by two foot with a one foot wing, if that makes sense. So that's the sketch. So I took the sketch, and I'm not going to do all the modeling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can do a tutorial on that later on down the road. But as you can see, this is the base with my holes that I'm going to use um, uh, for just lightening it up. I can hang it. Um, I just think it looks kind of cool kind of deal. And uh, these are different. They don't really serve any purpose. I just like the way they look. So this, these three pieces right here are going to be the back fence which are offset, they're actually backwards, um, but they're offset, so the blade will come through right here, a foot in, 12 inches in. And then this is the final, so it'll be one piece, two piece, three piece, so it'll be one piece, two piece, three piece glued together to make the back fence to hang on to. But I notched this out so I can put my T-Track in here. My furnace has just kicked on, so hopefully you can hear. And then this, one, two, three of these will be the back fence glued together. And then these two front ones will go outside for a blade guard. So when I cut through, uh, hopefully that's enough uh, to, because my last fence did not have, or my last table saw sled did not have. Now, one thing is really cool. This is a four foot by five foot piece of half inch Baltic birch. So what I'm going to do is select all these pieces. So now they're all pink. Go over here to nest. I want to nest one copy. Now, if I wanted to make three of these sleds, I could hit three and it will multiply all these pieces by three and group them as efficiently as it can. So I'm going to do one, preview it, and it reorganized everything so I can get all my pieces on one sheet and this is all the waste I'll have. So, now, we've already taken the file off the computer, put it on the jump drive, loaded the jump drive, and we can now find the program on our CNC controller. On the table, we have placed and centered our half inch sheet of Baltic birch. Remember, it's four foot by five foot. We've put a quarter inch compression bit from Vortex in there. And we've already, I've already zeroed it and all that kind of stuff. We can do that another time uh, in a tutorial type video. But now I'm going to turn on the vacuum. I'm going to start the program and the dust collector and it's going to be very loud. So I'll probably mute all this and do a montage of cutting. So let's find it. There is our table saw, two table saw sled. And that is ready to go. So we will hit the vacuum. That's ready to go. And you'll see that spooling up. And 
Okay, so this is the uh, this is it. <laughs> Obviously, we have to glue it together and final sand everything. But this is the basic idea. As you can see, and inside the fence there, where we'll put our T track. Got a nice blade guard back here. Let's be raised up. That is a really nice, heavy duty fence. All right, just a quick update. I have drilled, well actually measured, and drilled, and mounted the uh, tracks from Microjig. Okay, it is now day two on the table saw sled version 3.0. We have everything glued together. This will be the back fence. This is where the T-Track slot is, or we'll be mounting our T-Track slot in here. And I've got some cracks that I filled with Starbond, not sponsored, um, CA glue. It's amazing stuff, it's tinted, and it fills cracks very nicely, and everything's looking pretty good. It is rough sanded, so we're gonna final sand it. We're gonna round over, put a round over edge on everything. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time with, uh, with with squaring the fence and doing the five cut method. I mean, I will be spending the time to do that so that's a, pre a precise piece of equipment for me. But like I said, there's 5,384 some odd videos on how to do that. Um, you can check any of those videos out as well. This is just kind of an overview, my second video, getting my feet wetter. Uh, type thing. That's going to conclude the build of Table Saw Sled version 3.0. But first, I got an awesome mail call 
from Jake Thompson over at Northside Custom Craft. He made a video on turning these mallets, and let me tell you, this thing is beautiful. He doesn't have really cool lights like I do in my shop, but uh, the, Jake, this thing is amazing. Amazing. So, I look forward to beating on rusty nails with this, and uh, I'm, I'm going to forge a railroad spike chisel just for this. Just to use for this. Anyway, so this is a beautiful mallet. Jake, I got your mallet right here. Purple heart, maple. We'll get that out in the mail to you soon. I'll, uh, I'll leave a card up here. You can go check out, check out this mallet being turned. It's amazing. So this is the table saw sled version 3.0, like I said. We're going to call it done. Stick a fork in it. She's done. These are the pieces of the old sled. These are heavy, doubled up oak stair treads. They're all one inch material, nice and thick. It was a good sled, and we used three quarter inch plywood. Um, it was a good sled. I think this is a better sled. It is made out of half inch Baltic birch. Like we discussed, we designed it on the CNC. Uh, I reused the slides off of the old sled. They are micro jig, uh, not a sponsored uh, plug. They just work. So if something works, I'll plug it, use it. So we put some fancy holes in here. I like to think it makes the sled go faster. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make the sled go faster. I think it just looks cool. Maybe it lightens it up a little bit. I don't think it lightens it up much. But, you know, maybe it could be a clamping solution down the road or something, or I can hang it on the wall. I can put a nice wooden peg in the wall and hang this thing up. The fences front and rear are also made out of half-inch Baltic birch. We have three layers uh, for the main front, uh, front fence and three layers glued together for the, main, for the rear fence. Then I added another three layers, just like this rear, to the back of the front fence. Uh, to make a nice hefty integral blade guard. Everything is rounded off. It's nice and smooth. There's no splinters. Uh, you know, it's, it's a nice sled. It feels good in your hand. Uh, it glides nice. It's got one coat of wax on it right now. I'll wax it again. We put an integral T-trap slot in here. It is split where the saw curve comes through, but I got a just a, this is a, I don't know what that is, white plastic. It's off of, I got it off Amazon. Just tighten it down, slides in a T-track. It's not moving anywhere. So this is a very, a very generic, there's no inch marks or anything. I can, I can add that, you know, just use a tape measure to measure it out and mark it. It does have a little slot that runs in the T-Track to keep it from twisting so it's positive once it's locked. Or you can run without it. Other than that, it's a basic table saw sled. It's 24 by 24 is the main working area and it's a foot wider on the my left hand side. So it's a nice little cross cut sled. I hope to get a lot of years out of it. Thank you for hanging out. If you got any questions, well, you know, I'll try to answer.